So I got the rear cover off. Uh, that took a little longer than I expected, but I was very proud that I didn't uh, basically mar up this surface here as I was prying out that rear bar here. As you can see, this is the shift fork for the reverse gear. And once this engages, it goes in, engages, and then it will then turn this idler gear here, which will then turn this uh, output shaft here. So basically this is the output shaft that turns and rotates the, uh, the differential so you'll be able to uh, go and have reverse so this is pretty cool and uh, good tips here how you do how you pry this cover off here this is the cover here so right here whoop, this is where I have to start because there's a little uh, this little area right here that is not part of the where the surface mates against the other uh, tr middle transmission housing. So basically you take a little screw screwdriver and strike right around here to get uh, this started basically. So if it was here, I, st I strike. Oh. So I strike down with a hammer. I mean, a uh, hammer and, and a screwdriver here to, to start to actually move this out of this entire housing here and once I move a little bit out I then got a screwdriver here to go in and start carefully prying out along the edge here until I basically break all of the gasket here and able to pull out the cover that way so it just takes time but i would say take your time and you'll eventually get it so i'm actually really proud that i did not mess this up because this would have cost me who knows thousands of dollars probably or at least a thousand dollars to get a replacement cover for this guy over here so next step now right here okay next step now right here is i will go clean because there was some oil that dripped out once the rear cover is out basically next step is to there are these two collar nuts that hold this reverse gear and the synchro in place as well as uh this this gear this uh reverse gear in, in place as well so basically these are collared so these are pinned right here so basically what you need to do is go in with a small little screwdriver and knock this out right here so you're able to uh I zip this off with an impact wrench. Now, you can also you can get impact wrench, and as well as one good thing is that the factory service banger says to have to engage two gears at the same time in reverse, so they'll they'll, they'll catch onto each other, and that will provide you know, enough leverage if we're, if, to break the torque on these two big nuts right here. So I'm gonna do a combination just in case I'll just engage two of th these gears here and then zip this off with an impact wrench and then I should be able to get all of these things out. Uh, oh yeah, good. One thing of note is that I need to, right here, there are two pins that are holding this, uh, reverse shift fork so you, what you need to do is you, you need to see if you can basically get a drift and knock these out right here so basically that's what you need. you need to knock these pins out get this off then you'll be able to get this entire synchro engagement uh, collar here and then I'll be able to like take 
out all this in make sh making sure that I do not lose any of these parts, especially this washer here and within here there was, I think there's another washer in here too. So yeah, this is the next step. And those lockout nuts are off. So here's what the, the nut looks like here is off. So you had to really, what you have to do is basically you need to get a small head screwdriver and then hammer in straight on through here so you can like uh, give some width on the little the indent that has been pinned in right here. So basically right there. So basically that's what you need to do. You need to go ahead, hammer in this in. Hammer this in as much as you can to expand the pin. And after that, you go and zip the bolt off with a, an impact wrench, a 38 millimeter socket right here. Once you loosen the torque, I was able to then just uh, unscrew the these two locking nuts right here and make sure that the gear is locked in place. So you have two gears um, engaged right here. So make sure that you have that. So that will make it easy for you to go in and unscrew this after you break the torque on these bolts. So uh, don't be surprised if like this material here that's like really on the edge of the the shaft here basically disintegrates because well it, they're meant to so don't worry about it that's why these are mainly one-time use so uh yeah so make sure you have new sets of these when you uh, screw these in and then after that you just go and peen these in again when you're reinstalling this so really that's mainly the the main thing that i need to get done in order to extract get these gears out and then take uh the synchros and the, and the engagement fork and all this out in order to, to take out the remainder of this housing and i need to unzip these nuts here so let's get these out first and then after that i need to untorque unmount uh, the transmission mounts here take these off and then after that take these bolts off so i could then take off the support bracket so i will have a nice clear way to extract this housing right here one thing to note is that once i take these off i need to put a jack underneath here to support uh, this part of the transmission so make sure you have you do that so everything's out already all the needle bearings race bearings washers everything is out so what's next is to actually take off the mounting points I already started here had these two big nuts over here these are i think 24 millimeter nuts that need to break on the mount and then after that I'm going to go and put my jack underneath to support the transmission housing and then start getting these nuts out. Once I have that, then I'm going to start zipping out these uh, mounting points over here and then figure out a way to like get this transmission housing out and pull it out this way. So here is what the gears look like on the rear end. So this is basically kind of a flip down image because basically it's a good practice to when you take out, uh, especially any gears related to transmission, this is what it looks like facing uh, if it, it was installed. And then basically I take this out and then I flip it down here, including this washer here. So it, it tells me exactly, exactly what face and but the washer should be facing the transmission as well as the order of the parts. So basically this is, is a, uh, what's it called? Key, key lock washer here. Then I need to make sure that it aligns with the housing. This is the big reverse gear and it's flipped down 
with all of its synchros and engagement color down here along with the Artronic fork here. So basically this is how I would do it. I would recommend you to follow this best practice as well. This is what my shop teacher told me and I'm just imparting the wisdom that he imparted on me. So bolts are out of this housing right here. All the bolts and there were actually three bolts in the back that had to take out as well. So the next thing is to get a screwdriver and strike, like I plan to like strike around here, right here to uh, get a gap here and start prying out uh, the trans, this housing unit here in order for me to wiggle this out and take this out. One thing to know is that since the trans mounts are gone, I'm supporting the back part of this transmission with a jack and some uh, rubber stands I have. So that's very important to jack up this part of the housing. I'm jacking up this middle part right here, not this actual part because this needs to go, but there's a middle part here that I'm jacking up at the bottom. All right, so I have updates. Turns out it is the point to crack open this area right here. It's not here or here or anything like that. There is a little overhang right around here. There's a little, uh, it's very subtle, but there's a little extra overhang right here meat that you can go in with a stubby screwdriver and a hammer and you crack it down and go inward and keep cracking, keep going inward. It's gonna start splitting this top up here. So. It's starting to work because right here, go in with the razor blade and you know that the case is starting to split right here if you can slide a razor blade down through here. So basically, I'm almost there. I need to hammer this out a little bit more. Try to hammer it inward, inward here, instead of like outward or, or rearward right here. So, but hammer inward and it should split enough that I should be able to insert a screwdriver and start prying out the casing. I managed to uh, figure this out. So there is an overhang here. So you just go under, knock it out, try to split this open. First, furthermore, there's like two more overhangs at the bottom. Right here right here yeah so basically towards the drain plug there's an overhang here i managed to get in a screwdriver knock this out and another overhang here i managed to knock this out rearward as well so three overhangs that I had to go and knock in order to split this open to give me enough leverage to start prying out with a screwdriver so that's what happened so that is what i did to get this uh, start to get this casing out and the hardest part is over i managed to get this transmission housing out and lo and behold here are the forks and the shift rods that i need to replace this is uh three four and five six and this house is first gear second gear and reverse gear so next step is to go and knock out these pins here with the drift, take this out. Once I have this out, then I could just slide these um, rods out like so. So basically, yeah, just need to knock out, I think, these pins here with the drift. And we are basically will be halfway there. So here's how I did it. How I, and here's the transmission housing over here. And basically, if you go zoom in here, this is where I st struck my uh, screwdriver here. Oh, let me, let me zoom in a little bit. And then I struck one here as well. And struck one here as well. So, oh, actually, not here, but here. So this is basically the, the top part. So let me just go in. This was the top right part that I 
I started banging out here. And once I have a little bit of a gap, because I managed to get a little bit of a gap at the top of the transmission housing, I went down to the bottom right here and knocked this one rearward and then knocked this one rearward here because these, these were overhanging as well. So basically that, and then once I have had a good gap, I was able to start prying everything out slowly with the screwdriver out here. And then finally I got a pry. This is, this was very crucial. At the final stage, I got this small pry bar and pried these holes here, these holes here, 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 and here. And these were the three nuts that you need to go in right here. Let's see if I'm zoom in. Go in, unscrew these, and then take these out slowly. And then basically right here, you have to jack up the transmission a little bit higher. So it's gonna be angled a little bit like this. Take this off and then, cause basically what you're doing, you're jacking up the entire engine. And luckily for us, the, mount, the mounts were able to be flexible enough for me to jack up the entire, basically the entire engine up at an angle so I could like extract this transmission housing. Once I got that housing off, I basically jacked it down to um, an even level to reduce the stress on uh, the engine mounts. But yeah, this is basically, I think the hardest part of uh, the manual conversion right here. Just, it was a bear to really get this thing out because since it's, uh, this is my first time ever dealing with a transmission housing of this nature and not gonna, knocking this out. So next steps is to, like I said, take these two shift rods out over here. Once I have that, then I can install the conversion bushings. One here, another conversion bushing here. And then see here, there are two conversion bushings I need to install here. And these gotta be loose fit uh, bushings, but I'm gonna use Loctite to uh, create a semi-permanent seal for um, these conversion bushings.